bro, check the sound, check how it goes. Um, here's your bald headed uh, white supremacist, Slavic trash, whatever you want to call me. And today on the agenda, we have the topic of traveling because um, I heard quite a lot of misconceptions about it throughout my travels. And um, yeah, a lot of fanciness uh, connected with it, a lot of stereotypes, a lot of wow, how cool it sounds. So today I'm going to talk how uncool it is to travel. And uh, my reason for traveling was like back in 2018, first time when I went to China, it was just money and the financial reason, getting a better job, getting a job, uh, getting paid teaching English. Uh, at the time it was kind of like profitable and easy to get the job. You just gotta have looks and uh, well, certain level of English, which I had. And um, yeah, now that's how I started my travels. Uh, first it was China, then I stayed in China for a lot for a while. I've been like in and out. Uh, then uh, I just got tired of staying in Asian reality, and I want to change that, and I got money for that. And I traveled to Africa, I stayed for three weeks in Africa. Just got even more annoyed and uh, frustrated, tired of everything, and I uh, had to relocate back home. The time I kind of like got a crisis, like I had a lot of money. And I uh, was frustrated because I didn't know what to invest it into. Surprisingly, I mean, I just got like 5,000 bucks, but that was quite a lot of money for me at the time. I lived in Belarus and uh, it really gave me a lot of frustration, but that's another story. So after China, I went to Vietnam for the same purpose of making money and uh, traveling and uh, enjoying, like escaping snow. At that time, that was the, kind of like my motto, escaping snow. But uh, that's one of the things I'm kind of like longing for right now, staying in Brazil and not having seen snow for over almost a year. Yeah, so in a few weeks is going to be a year that I haven't seen snow. I mean, yeah, I saw some uh, glaciers in Argentina back in March, but that's not a story. So, yeah, uh, like my travels were either escaping uh, some bummy jobs, financial situations or escaping the reality that I got pissed off like something alien to me and um, just changing alien into more alien but you know from another side the, the same way I did uh, with Africa kind of although it was kind of educational as well quite educational and um, inspirational in a lot of ways for my music endeavors so yeah I wouldn't say it was like worthless no definitely not but uh, the thing is like uh, the more you travel the more you start comparing things and that kind of um, interrupts your daily life so for example now i'm staying in brazil and uh, i i want to have you know the best things that i used to experience in other places like i want to have the stable electricity that i had back in belarus i want to have uh, decent job opportunities as the, it was in china or vietnam for me and uh, I don't know, I want this, this and that from different places, but it just doesn't make any sense because, uh, you know, these places are as far from each other geographically and culturally as possible. So th that just creates a lot of frustration for me. And the thing is, like, uh, when I'm going to leave Brazil, uh, mostly I'm going to remember positive things about here. And that's what I'm going to be, uh, you know, missing out on living in some other place. Same way with Vietnam or other countries. So when you stay in this this particular place, you're noticing a lot of negatives and you do a lot of comparisons. But when you leave the place, you mostly remember positives. Works in a weird way, but uh, you always want to come back somewhere. Which uh, brings another question is that when you travel a lot, you kind of lose the, the feeling, the, the sense, the notion of home. And uh, your home becomes like everywhere. Like I feel home here, living in Rio, or I feel home, living in St. Petersburg, in Moscow, in Minsk to a certain extent, back in my hometown in Belarus, in Ho Chi Minh City, in Guangzhou, in Kunming, in China, like everywhere, even probably Dar es Salaam, although I stayed like a few days. When I'm coming back next time, probably I'm going to feel like slightly at home in Dar es Salaam, in Tanzania. Surprisingly, yeah, but, but uh, they're kind of like uh, negative and positive at the same time, because when I'm coming back to my real home, I don't feel any connection anymore like it's just just a point on the map and that's it no no special feelings involved and that kind of uh, that's kind of sad kind of sucks as well but at the same time it's quite liberating so I don't know it's up to your it's up to your uh, perception um, 
a lot of other misconceptions I heard about travel is that you have to have a lot of money, like a lot of people back in Belarus or in some other places, they just asking me like, oh, you must have like a good job, like you are an IT guy or whatever, that you can afford living in Rio, but <laughs> the reality is that I'm living on 250 bucks a month here in Rio, just because I'm like living humble life and uh, I don't indulge into some pleasures or whatever, like I don't go out, you like, much. I don't eat out in some fancy restaurants. I cook my own food. I live in a very cheap place, but at the same time, it has a lot of benefits for me, you know, compared to some uh, rich kids' places. Back in Ipanema, for example, that's all another story, but I mean, Brazil is, is quite special in this regard because uh, the, the more you pay, does not guarantee you basically anything. Does not guarantee you security, does not guarantee you better views, does not guarantee you better quality of, of place you stay in. Does not guarantee you shit. <laughs> well, that's Brazil for you. That's what I love about it. Actually, that's why I'm staying here like for the third time. But uh, back to the topic, like yeah, a lot of people I've met they were quite like from Anglo-Saxon type of countries like Australia, Canada, England, the United States, and for, for a lot of them it was quite the opposite. Like life back home would, would be much more expensive rather than in any other parts of the world. So that kind of brings the question, what exactly they escape in them? And uh, yeah, I mean, like, the more I'm, the more I'm meeting uh, Americans, the less I want to travel to the United States, because yeah, there should be, should be a certain reason why they flee in their promised land. That's all another story as well. And uh, another thing is like, uh, like uh, when it comes to climate and uh, weather, so certainly if you're born in some kind of northern place, as I as I was, uh, like in Belarus, you're gonna see like you're gonna experience a lot of like uh, snow and um, a lot of uh, cloudy type of weather, less sunshine, and um, yeah, cold temperatures. So your body is naturally adjusted to it. It's gonna take like a long, long, long time, a lot of years, like basically 20 years to get acclimatized to other type of climate, like Brazilian type of climate or Vietnamese climate. It was like hot and humid, 32 degrees every day. So that creates a lot of uh, like irritation. You just physically feel uncomfortable, sweaty, and uh, you become angry, annoyed at, at the slightest things. Like it's just like a fire that's catching a dry straw. And yeah, I'm just gonna be pissed off about everything. And uh, I, don't th I don't think that it's gonna take um, like yeah, certainly you can you can get adjusted to the to another climate, to the hotter climate, or whatever like escaping snow type of climate. But uh, it's definitely gonna take uh, quite a long time, and uh, this time of adjustment is not gonna be comfortable for you. I mean, I promise that, straight up. So um, that's probably it. What I wanna say about traveling. It's not that cool as it seems. It's not that cool as it sounds. And uh, whether it's a good investment of your money and uh, time, I don't know. Just like so far I'm living this type of life, but who knows, maybe next year I'm just gonna be settled back in the woods of Belarus. Peace out.